If Galaxy S a flagship for ordinary people, then Galaxy Note fablets for real technology lovers. Samsung managed to include all their features in one gauge, their own chipset and the same origin AMOLED screen, the eye unlock, smart display sensor and the same stylus, which by the way became even more tasty this year. Long story short, this is a wonderful masterpiece and it's unique on the market. Will Samsung jump over their best this year? Let's find out. Nowadays, top Samsung devices doesn't change much in appearance, therefore it is necessary to pay attention to the most subtle details. This time the phablet got a chamfering on the metal frame, which disappeared several years ago. Suddenly designers set to emphasize the outline of aluminum elements to the body again, and it turned out to be pretty much fine. The set of cameras is more compact this year, and for some reasons there are people who boils over about that. Frankly speaking, I didn't find anything awful and disgusting in it. I think both camera and scanner are nice. In contrast to the notch madness, Samsung didn't follow the Apple steps and their iPhone 10. But considering they already patented the phone with cutout in the screen, there are good chances that Note 9 is their last smartphone with a flat upper edge. But anyway, notch haters now have one more device in their mind. Rejoice, people! The slot for SIM cards allows to set either two of these or one SIM card plus some memory extension. Traditionally, for Samsung flagship, the phone is what waterproof and dustproof according to the IP68 standard. Even the buttons don't fall out and aren't taken out by small force, at least for our pink sample. Now you will definitely know which color might be the best for Note 9. Needless to say, the smartphone with 6.4 inch screen won't be easy to use with one hand. However, first of all, there is a one hand mode, and secondly, just think, would it be comfortable to draw something with stylus on the 5 inch screen? So, in our case, the impressive dimensions can be justified not only due to style. As I mentioned, Note 9 has an eye unlock, which you can use individually or together with face unlock. It is said that such smart scanning is safer, but in practice, the phone wakes up longer. Apart from Apple, Samsung didn't give one one thing and took away another. In their opinion, it is for good. The fingerprint reader is also here, and as world banks still do not understand the eye reader, it is impossible to call a good old dactyloscopic sensor useless. It is not so snap, but personally, I use it on my work with apps, so it is possible to get by with it. One of the unusual features is the wake up button for Bixby, which I always take for lower volume button. You cannot turn it off or reassign now, though I'm sure that the guys from XDA will fix this over time. Near the home button, the screen has an area sensitive to pressure that can wake our smartphone up. Kinda old school, isn't it? Besides, you can use home button even when it's hidden. For example, in games or during videos, sometimes it can be useful. On the other hand, there is nothing comfortable when the phone's waking up when I try to put it in the pocket. However, I may just criticize too much. And here is the most important and unique thing in the Note series, and in particular Note 9, the S Pen. The stylus got a gigantic number of functions, which may take days to cover in details, therefore I will relatively briefly take the bite on each of them. Perhaps the most demanded feature is Notes. I can hardly call it the best option for creation of paint and masterpieces, but it's good enough for a quick sketch to explain the idea, especially with such wide range of tools for it. Pleasant fact is that we can create notes without waking the phone that comes in handy, especially if every second counts. Another one. There are two modes of doing screenshots. First one is simple and fast, second is more fancy. Here you can select the necessary area and film an animation, for example to share a fragment via social network without loading video entirely or forcing people to look for the necessary part in timecode. The fast translator recognizes both words and phrases, in short, works pretty fine. For those with small children, there is coloring that is significantly better than constant cartoons or modern mobile games. And painting on the screen with stylus 
fabulous, it's far comfortable in car rather than with the felt tip pens in paper albums. Other feature, unlike in Apple, live messages are saved as animation and you can share them with any how as you wish. Next and my favorite is Glance. Any open app turns into a small icon which rolls out when you point at it. Pretty useful if you need to check some things on background. Magnify allows to watch photos with comfort and the small text on websites. The pen app is quite an Instagram for Galaxy Note Club, which proves that it is possible to draw something beautiful even on such small canvas. The features continue. This year's stylus turned out into the wireless controller to go through photos, play and pause videos on YouTube, to lead the presentation with decks, and the most important and interesting to control the camera shutter. Galaxy Note 9 interacts with S Pen at the distance up to 10 meters, that is more than enough for group photos via tripod. S Pen works nearly half an hour in a standby mode from its tiny battery. Too many clicks will definitely run the battery down quicker, but in life it doesn't create problems, especially as it needs less than 40 seconds to charge up. Unfortunately, it is impossible to check it out of a laboratory without taking the stylus apart. I dream that one day the smartphones would charge as quickly, but maybe I want too much, at least for 2018. Kind of strange, however, the whole section in settings for stylus is devoted to the possibility to wake the smartphone up with stylus button and set action for its ejection. A pity is that except the S Pen menu, it is possible to assign only notes here. Samsung also included many settings for the display. You can change its color reproduction, set the virtual picture resolution that you anyway won't feel on the practice and customize always on display. The last one can be tuned especially detailed that I can't recall any device from other brands with at least similar flexibility. Also in settings there is a blue light filter and a lot of less necessary features I don't wanna waste your time watching about. The screen in Note 9 is 6.4 inch Quad HD Plus Super AMOLED Matrix where I found only two issues. The first is the rounded side edges, because of them the bright picture on the display shows distortions which in case of the slightest incline become even more obvious. The second, this display really tires my eyes. I don't know why but personally my eyes become very quicker with some OLED panels than with IPS, and Samsung somehow never pleased me in this case. After half an hour of work with smartphone, I feel like somebody rubbed my eyes with the sandpaper. For the rest, the AMOLED standards make an excellent job. Pixels density is great indeed, without dirt or any hints of red points. In the sun, the screen readability is pretty nice, I would say even better than in many LCD panels and no questions to the lower bright limit. On viewing angles, everything seems typical. There are small shades of blue and green when you incline the phone, however, no floating white balance or brightness cut down. In short, in front of us is a high-quality screen, which for sure will receive a bunch of awards to make Note 9 better on sale. Similarly, the camera is one of the best in 2018, at least as influencers say, but for me it wasn't so impressive. The main reason for this is processing, which makes the picture kinda plastic and truly not real. Noises are softwarely reduced to their maximum and in the end the picture always looks like oil painting and sometimes also loses detail because software makes corrections even in some parts of the screen where noises do not show up at all. On the other hand, the camera has a wide dynamic range, I use HDR only to guarantee nice details. With the help of the narrow aperture for the daylight shooting, images look sharper. For example, the flowers do not have the blurry edges and various artifacts that is so typical for smartphones with f1.8 aperture. The color reproduction is saturated, exposure is almost always brought to the top, but still the white balance is constantly correct. The camera easily deals with a slight front light and copes with aggressive one without problems too. Even under direct sunlight in the lens, the image remains detailed. Not every smartphone can boast with this. In the end, the photos turn out to be not ideal but quite good. I say, a bit less noise correction and everything would be brilliant. As always, they're shooting with optical zoom. I have no claims but from the point of daily usage, I still do not see a big sense in this feature. At night, photos came out pretty well, exposure is set slightly too much but for the rest, images are good. The single reason for which I can't praise the device for shooting in the dark is that it is not the first one with such outcome. If a few years ago, Sam Samsung was outstanding in this regard, now there are lots of devices with almost the same or even compatible capabilities. Program stabilization on video can be turned on only when filming 4K in 30fps and it works awesome. I agree, there are small traces of processing over the picture, but from the point of view of the ordinary user, everything looks awesome indeed. UHD with 60fps is written seemingly without stabilization, but its presence on video is noticeable.
possible too. Perhaps it is a work of optics. As well as on many other smartphones, there are time limits for filming. It is 10 minutes for 4K video with 30 FPS and 5 minutes for 60 FPS. I wouldn't recommend to take videos with high FPS at night, at least because the standard 30 FPS brings significantly more quality and I think it isn't necessary to explain details, you all perfectly see it now. The front camera in Note 9 can also boast of broad dynamic range, a normal color reproduction and, fortunately, absence of clarity adjustment and blurring for making you look like a plastic doll. HDR here sometimes comes in handy, but it doesn't make the picture oversaturated, at the same time still lifting it to great level. I cannot call night selfies a masterpiece, similarly for the night photos from the main camera. But frankly speaking, it is still pretty good result and I hope that in the next generation of Galaxy Note, the quality bar will jump even higher. The maximum resolution of videos from the front camera is Quadro HD. It is strange that for so many years it wasn't tightened to UHD, just deal with this. The clips are quite good except focus for some reason loses your face while moving and jumps to a background. There is a portrait mode both in selfie camera and the main one. In the first case everything isn't ideal at all, the outline is cut off vividly, so don't be surprised if your hairstyle appears in the bokeh zone. For the main camera everything is much better. Some faults take their places, but less often. Anyway, Samsung never had problems with it. Same as earlier, Note series still doesn't have the new hardware platform. Note 9 consists of the chip from S9 and S9 Plus, therefore you shouldn't wait for any surprises. Exynos 9810 chipset stands for 8-core processor with 4 cores on 2.7 GHz and 4 on 1.8. It is remarkable for the Mali G72 MP18 graphics, there are only two options to buy. 6 gigs of RAM with 128 gigs of storage and for 8 gigs RAM with 512 storage. Whoever said differently, but there are no problems for Samsung in gaming world. As part of this review, we were playing on a smartphone for 2 hours non-stop. Despite wary eyes, numb hands, half discharged and decently heated up smartphone, there were no signs of lags from it. Neither PUBG nor World of Tanks bleeds at maximum settings upset us with slowdowns, even when the amount of action was enough for the graphics score to retard. I understand that benchmark tests grant more scores to Qualcomm chips, but so far I in person have no reason to doubt the performance of the flagship Exynos. In real tasks, the system works snapping, needless to say more. The phablet is equipped with a battery of gigantic capacity for Samsung, 4000 mAh. It allows the smartphone to survive a day in any circumstances, except only for games I can guarantee up to 5-6 hours. Otherwise, be sure to have the full day of work without a thought about charging. If you are not so active with the smartphone, Smartphone, it may take even two days to discharge it completely, but I won't count on it. After all, you're buying the flagship tablet not to restrain yourself, aren't you? It is declared to be the fast charging with quick charge 2.0 support, but I cannot confirm it as our guy charges evenly both from the fast adapter of the standard and from usual 2 amperes power brick. To be specific, it takes 2.5 hours for the full charge. I hope that in commercial samples everything is different. There is also an induction coil under the body. By wireless, the device fills up noticeably longer. From the brand Qi fast adapter, it takes up to 3 hours and 20 minutes for the battery to load from 0 to 100%. In discussion of the sound, let's start with headphones. Samsung make the sound pleasant and gentle, and unlike Xiaomi, they tune this with more attention and delicacy. The high frequencies are severely cut off and what's left is significantly damped, so as not to hurt anyone. The middle level and bass are slightly smooth, because here there are no sharp beats on the ears, but overall everything sounds natural without jumps and bass. There are two speakers and unlike Mi Max 3 where the stereo is present on words and absent in the smartphone itself, in Galaxy Note 9 the front speaker plays alone to the main one and its contribution I can feel for real. The smartphone sounds pure, loud, with imitation of low frequencies, but without sharp sound and rattle at high volume. If the room allows, the movie can be watched from the smartphone even without headphones. This review has turned out to be not so brief. That's why I do not want to discuss the software so picky. Here all is the same as we saw for example in S9 and S9 Plus. 
The most of important features in this case are dedicated to the stylus and many other things I mentioned in the review. In terms of software, I worry only for one thing. There are too many different means in it, and more than half of which I am sure people will not use at all. Well, it's time to sum out the results. Galaxy Note 9 is not the only smartphone on Exynos 9810. It does not have the largest screen on the planet and not the best camera in the whole world. What am I driving at? As before, the only solid piece in Note series is the S Pen. And if it is so important for you, you should definitely buy this smartphone. I'm sure you'll be happy with all the stack of benefits you'll get in addition to the most technologically advanced stylus in the world. In all other cases, take a look at Galaxy S9 Plus, which offers the same set of features and boasts to Note 9 only in regards of the battery life. The links to this smartphone you can find in the description box below. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time.